Mike, let's start with the fact that they give us one line that there's going to be an operating loss and they hint at more layoffs to come, but they don't give us the specifics. Why not put it all out there? Well, I, probably they're still trying to figure out exactly uh, how bad things will be, but I certainly think when Q1 shows up, the loss is going to reflect lower sell through and also lower gross margins, which are, you know, both a pretty dire sign of what's going on with their core business right now. So selling less stuff. Now, analysts were looking for them to have revenue in the neighborhood of three and a half billion dollars for this quarter, uh, closer to 15 billion, I believe, for the whole year. What do you think? What kind of numbers should we now be expecting? It's really hard to say because the press release is rather vague. The loss doesn't specify whether or not it's a gap loss or a pro forma loss. Uh, so uh, I would be pressed to speculate on it, but certainly it would be lower. Numbers are going to go down. But I think the decline in the stock price, the sharp decline, reflects the fact that this could get very ugly very quickly for RIM, uh, which might make it more difficult to get a premium under a potential acquisition scenario. Well, let's talk about some of those healthy, scenarios. Healthy yeah, sure. And, and you came out recently and suggested you think there's a possibility that Facebook would ultimately go after Research in Motion, not for the hardware, but for the network. Now, what, what, what are the odds you would put on that happening? Well, I, I, it's, you know, it, I mean, I, I, I hard to guess what's in Facebook's mind right now, other than they know they have a huge mobile problem. What we had suggested is, is one very interesting solution to that problem, because RIM's network is actually where all the value is, not in the hardware business. So I would certainly not recommend uh, buying RIM for the hardware business at all. In fact, we're actually saying that at these cheap prices, it's probably not worth anything. Uh, and I think the Q1 results will probably show that the margins in the hardware business have fallen off very sharply and are continuing to decline. It's more the services business, which is generating uh, about $4 billion in revenue and maybe almost as much that in EBITDA. And that would not only double Facebook's profit, but give it a um, platform in mobile that uh, could, in many ways, uh, give it the kind of competitive advantage against Apple and Google that it needs. But, but you're saying that RIM's hardware business, the street value, if they were to try and go out and do a deal right now, is zero? No, I'm saying not that it's zero, but that it is declining very rapidly. It probably still has some value. There's patents that you know probably could be valued there. There's obviously a growth in subscribers that we've seen. People may be able to pay something for that. But I think that value would be uh, very, very small compared to the value of the services business, which is really what's propping up the earnings of the company right now. Obviously, even with the decline, you're still talking about a big company to swallow. Tonight, their market valuation is north of $5 billion. Mark Zuckerberg suggested recently that he wasn't going to do another big deal, that they were going to do a lot of deals, but nothing of this size. Do you think that could stand in the way, perhaps his reluctance to swallow such a big fish? Yeah, it's possible, but you're going after an even bigger market, which is the global smartphone market, where, you know, roughly there are a billion handsets today sold, of which 30% are smartphones. So, um, you know, the investment of $5 billion to go after such a large market uh, may seem justified. And given, of course, the huge decline in valuation during the IPO relative to the concerns about that, which is far greater than the 5 or $6 billion or, you know, slightly more it might might cost them is far right. greater than that. Uh, this may actually be a wise investment in the longer term if they were to go down that path. Because you have to remember that a services business is throwing off cash at the rate of something around five to six hundred million dollars a quarter. Sure. Uh, quickly before we go, we know Research in Motion says we've got a new line of products coming later this year, but people are getting impatient. Do you think RIM will end the year as an independent company, uh, whether it's a deal to go private or somebody comes and, and buys them? Well, um, I don't think BlackBerry 10, or I, uh, let's put it this way. I think that uh, the probability is it's going to be very difficult for BlackBerry 10 to come out and suddenly completely reverse the sentiment around the company or its prospects as an acquisition candidate. Uh, and therefore, uh, but at the same time, the destruction in the, or the erosion in the core business, acceleration of that erosion will put, uh, I think, uh, pressure, huge pressure to explore these kinds of alternatives and try to consummate them. So yes, I would say in summary that 
I think there's a good probability, I can't tell why it's exactly mm. the end of the year, that RIM is, uh, you know, its days as an independent company or even structured as it is currently are numbered.